You are now about to learn about the brain. Hello? Is, oh, is this thing on? Oh, hi there. Many of you may recognize me because I'm located in every single one of your skulls. I'm the brain. Now, have any of you ever wondered why you dream or why you blink or how you remember how you even get to the grocery store? It's all thanks to me and the millions of nerve impulses that cross between my neuron synapses every single day. In fact, you could say I'm the boss of the entire body. Although I couldn't do it without the rest of the organs and muscles, I at least get to run the show. Now, there are five key parts to the brain. The cerebrum, the cerebellum, brainstem, pituitary gland, and hypothalamus. My assistant, Eric, who is not here right now, will give you examples of what each part helps you achieve. Let's get started. This is the cerebrum. So that pink part that you just saw, if you weren't listening, is called the cerebrum. It makes up about 85% of the entire weight of the brain, and that means it's really important. This is the thinking part of the brain and controls most of your voluntary muscles, the ones that you move when you tell them to. Without your cerebrum, you couldn't dance, walk, or talk. You also need your cerebrum when you're thinking hard, like when you try to solve a math problem, when you're playing a video game, or trying to fit in that last puzzle piece. The cerebrum also has your short-term memory, like remembering what movie you watched the night before, and your long-term memory, recalling the name of your teacher from, say, the third grade. Lastly, it helps you with reasoning, such as deciding that you need to do your homework the night before school, or it's going to be late. The cerebrum is broken up into two halves, the right side and the left. You may have heard that the right part of your brain controls your more creative side, like understanding abstract thoughts that pertain to color, music, and shapes, while the left side of your brain helps you out with math, logic, and speech. This hasn't been verified for certain, but scientists do know that the right part of your brain controls the left side of your body, and vice versa. Now, I think something might be wrong with Eric's cerebrum, because this is him trying to figure out a math problem. I got some magic in me. Every time I touch that track, it turns into gold. That's pretty bad. Hopefully that means he figured it out though. This is the cerebellum. So that black and orange part you just saw is called the cerebellum. It's located right below the cerebrum and it's only about one eighth the size of its neighbor. However, it's still a very important part of the brain because it controls your balance, movement, and coordination. Without the cerebellum, Eric here can do a trick on his skateboard and you would have probably hobbled and slumped your way to human anatomy class. This is the brain stem. So that right there was the brain stem, another helper of mine, which sits right under the cerebrum and connects the rest of me to the spinal cord, which runs down your neck and back. Thankfully, the brain stem controls all the functions that your body needs to stay alive, such as breathing, digesting food, and circulating blood. Speaking of which, looks like Eric is taking a little nap. Let's go sneak up on him. Today I don't feel like doing anything. I just wanna lay in my bed. Hopeless. Anyway, your brain stem is also in charge of controlling your involuntary muscles. In other words, the ones that work automatically without you even thinking about them. Not only does the brain stem direct the body to circulate more blood through the heart while you're exercising or digesting food, it also sorts through the hundreds of messages your body and I send back and forth every day. You are now looking at the pituitary gland. So, that little pea-sized thing that you just saw towards the front of your brain is called the pituitary gland. And it is a distributor of hormones throughout the body from birth to puberty and for the rest of your life. This tiny gland also helps you grow and can even make you gain a little weight, especially when you're going through puberty. Let's see what Eric would look like if his pituitary gland got a little out of whack. Poor Eric! The gland also controls one's metabolism, so Eric can once again blame his pituitary phase by not being able to burn sugar and water properly. Last, but certainly not least, the hypothalamus. So, we're almost done. The hypothalamus is located behind the pituitary gland and is quite a small, but it probably needs a little bit more girth since it's your body's thermostat. The hypothalamus also knows that it needs to try and keep your body around 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, 
or 37 degrees Celsius. When you get hypothermia, for example, your hypothalamus sends out messages to your muscles to start shivering in order to heat up your body. The only bad thing about it is that it can overwork your muscles and tire them out before they can effectively warm up your body. I really can't stay. But baby, it's cold outside. I've got to go away. But baby, it's cold outside. So, let's move on to nerves. So obviously I'm the boss, but I still can't do it alone. Like I said earlier, I need some nerves. Actually, a lot of them. And I need the spinal cord, which is a long vanilla nerves inside your spinal column and the vertebrae that protects it. It's the spinal cord and nerves, known as the nervous system, that let messages flow back and forth between the brain and the body. Let's say you hit your hand on the porch or something. Your body needs to send messages that you hurt yourself so your body can react accordingly. But you wonder about these nerves, which you can't see without a microscope. What are they? The nervous system is made up of millions and millions of neurons, which are microscopic cells. Each neuron has tiny branches coming off of it that let it connect to many other neurons. When you were born, you actually came with all the neurons that you will ever have. Then, many of them were not connected to each other. When you learn new things, the messages travel from one neuron to another over and over. When the brain starts to create connections or pathways between the neurons, things become easier and you can do them better and better. Think back to the first time you rode a bike. Your brain had to think about pedaling, staying balanced, steering with the handlebars, watching the road, maybe even hitting the brakes all at once. Seems hard, huh? But eventually, as you got more practice, the neurons sent messages back and forth until a pathway was created in your brain. Now you can ride your bike without thinking about it because your neurons have successfully created a bike riding pathway. As you can see here, Eric is walking very carelessly and ugh, he hits his hand on the porch. His brain immediately sends messages throughout the body that he's in pain, all thanks to the nerves in his hand. Unfortunately, this is a very minor injury, so he kind of just has to wait off the pain. Bye guys, thanks for learning about the brain.